I worked with Annie Leibovitz for three years, and then after I left her, I had $15,000 in the bank. I thought I was really rich, and it's going to get me very far, and uh, I didn't want to do any more assisting. I, I was done assisting. I thought, you know, once you worked with her, why would I go on and assist somebody else? I mean, she's, you know, she's still one of my most favorite photographers. So I ran around all over town with my rollerblades and dropped off my portfolio. And they said, oh, you work with Annie? Or most of the time, I would just drop it off and pick it up two days later. And didn't hear from anybody. I didn't get one single shot. My, my photographs were so stark and so um, unemotional and so cold that I think they weren't really suited for magazines at all. Then um, in 1999, the big break came in. I photographed Vanessa Redgrave for Time Out magazine. I had only 10 minutes. I said, how long do you need? I said, well, for my close-up, I can do it in 10 minutes. So they had me photograph Vanessa Redgrave and we choose this one frame where she had this like very genuine little smirk on her face. And uh, they published it full page, everybody saw it. And all of a sudden it clicked and it was basically like an avalanche. Most photo shoots nowadays uh, have about an hour to two, three hours with a person. And within that time frame, I have maybe four or five different setups. Or not necessarily different setups, but different ideas of things I want to um, achieve. The close-ups being one of them. Sometimes uh, I come to a photo shoot and the photo editor said, well, they were okay with you doing the photo shoot, but I had to promise them that you won't do a close-up. Yeah, some people are not too pleased to be forgot that close-up, but yeah, I can't even be mad at them. You know, we're all vain to some extent and nobody, yeah, nobody, you know, especially if your face is your job and your looks are a big part of your livelihood then uh, it takes on another dimension. Obviously, I'm always bummed out and I don't even want to know how many jobs I have missed out on because of maybe publicists telling the magazine, well, no, we don't like that photographer. Or to get them to do what I want is I try to distract them as much as possible by talking a lot to them, by asking them questions, by engaging them in conversation, by playing music, by sometimes pretending I'm not photographing and talking maybe to an assistant and snapping a frame, whatever it takes to get as many as possible moments when they are not just like giving you, you know, whatever they want to give you and they're kind of caught off guard basically. The closer portrait is just the beginning and then I hope to come back with a picture that is um, memorable in a different way, something more conceptual, something funny, something witty and um, oftentimes all of my ideas are being shut down by mostly publicists. Jeff Koons I had photographed before, so I had a little bit of a history with him and I had some ideas that I ran by his assistant and she told him about them. He wasn't crazy about it, but then I went and met with him. And it's sometimes, you know, most of the time it's a difficult long process to, to convince people of these elaborate ideas. All the successes are on the wall, but um, considering I've been doing this for 15 years, so you can imagine how many times yeah, I walked away without anything. You know, being a professional photographer means you have to produce an image at a given time, at a given place, of a given person, and given circumstances, and you have to come back with something that looks great. You know? And you're always judged by your last picture. You're only as good as your last picture. And nobody ever wants to hear any excuses, you know. Oh, okay, my, the person I photographed was in a bad mood. It started raining, we were outside. Oh, it was cold, they were cold. Or my equipment didn't work. Or they showed up late and the light was gone. Nothing else <laughs> matters, no matter what happens. And there's always something going wrong. I think it's best to find your top three, four photographers who you want to be like and then try to assist for them and learn as much as you can and stay for long periods of time, for like two, three years. Once, you, once you've seen the full, you know, about everything that goes into it uh, on a bigger scale from a very professional photographer, then, you know, you will be able to do the same one day. And that will separate you from the masses of photographers that are running around taking snapshots and posting them on Instagram and taking a thousand pictures a day and having five nice ones. I think it helps to have a very narrow body of work so people if they want a rough grainy on the fly looking intimate black and white portrait 
and you have 20 of those and the photo editor remembers, oh, this guy came with those, or this girl came with these kind of portraits, then you might get that job, you know? So you almost need to pigeonhole yourself. If you have a portfolio and you have a landscape and a still life and then you photograph the car and then you have some friends that you photographed on vacation right next to a nice lake and then you have two studio portraits, then you don't leave any expression, you know? Then you just have a bunch of kind of nice pictures, but it's not, uh, you don't have a vision, you don't have a style. You know, so, you know, you have to find something that coincides with your personality that, you know, you can be really good at and then um, just do that one thing.